Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the top five email clients for Linux. Now, chances are you use email. I think everybody pretty much does. Now, the level that you use email probably varies. Uh, some people check it several times an hour. Some people check it once a week. I mean, really, it depends on what you do for a living or your general idea of what email is for. Because a lot of people have transferred from using email to chat apps like Discord and Telegram and things for their primary means of communication and leave email for corporate responses and stuff like that. But no matter what your level of use of email is, chances are you've tried to decide how to use it. Now, most people, I'd say probably about 80 to 90% actually just use the web client. So if you use Gmail, which most people use Gmail, unfortunately, uh, I use Gmail, I can't help it. Um, that Google has their hooks into me. I can't, you know, not use, must use Google services, must, um, <laughs> I lost it there for a minute. Uh, anyways, uh, you know, most people use the web client, so they just go to gmail.com or whatever, and that's how they check their email, and then on their phone, they'll use the Gmail app. But if you're a nerd or if you need more features than what the web client will provide, there are several clients available on Linux that do a really good job. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so the first one I want to talk about is Neoma, and that's what this is right here. Now, Neoma is not for everyone. I'm going to put that out there right up front. It's a terminal-based application, and terminal-based applications are definitely not something that everybody will be into. So that's just the thing. If you're not into terminal-based applications, go ahead and jump into the next application, which I'll leave the timestamps down below so you can jump around if you want to. Main selling point of Neoma is that it is terminal-based, it's low on resources, and it's highly customizable. It also has full support for most email services that support IMAP, including Google. But you'll have to have two-factor authentication in, uh, enabled in order to actually use Google or Gmail uh, inside of Neoma because you'll have to have an app-specific password in order to do, do so. Now, setting up Neoma is not easy. If you're just going to do it on your own. Now, Luke Smith has a tool or a script that he's written called Mutt Wizard, which I'll link in the description below. Uh, and that will allow you to set it up really easily. It has several dependencies if you go through and do that, do it that way, including pass and GPG and all these things that you have to use in order to actually secure your account. So I've started with this one because this is the nerdiest option out there. This is the one that I use as my daily driver. Uh, but it's really not for everyone. But if you're into tweaking stuff and getting into the nitty-gritty details of customizing terminal-based applications, this one would definitely be an option for you. So the next one I'm going to talk about is Thunderbird. Now Thunderbird, I'm not exactly sure what the development status of Thunderbird is. It's not part of Mozilla anymore. It's its own separate thing, but it used to be its own separate thing. Then it was Mozilla. It's very confusing. I don't know who's developing it anymore. It is still being developed. It's probably the most popular email client on Linux. It is very customizable. It has a full a productivity suite, including email, calendar, to-do. It has enterprise support. It ha Of the ones that are on here that are GUI applications, it has the most customizable uh, appearance in terms of actually laying stuff out so you can move your message your the message over here or up top or along the side it doesn't really matter there's several options there are it has keyboard support and stuff like that it's very easy to set up works well with google and pretty much every imap service and i think it also works with pop i'm not sure are there even any services out there that still use pop 3 i'm not i'm not even sure uh, i think most places have now just switched over to imap but it works very well with google uh, even works well with Google with two-factor authentication enabled, which is not something that uh, other apps on this list can actually say, because all the other ones, if you're using something like Geary, which I'm going to talk about here in a few minutes, uh, you'll have to have two-factor authentication set up and, and get a um, app-specific password in order for, for it to actually work. With the, with Thunderbird, you can actually log into your Google uh, account through a, like a browser plugin that it has that's included and it will just you know log you in and then do whatever two-factor right in thunderbird instead of logging you out or not working at all so 
uh, a few cons for this. It's very clunky. That's something I've noticed that is, it's just, there's a lot here. And the whole full productivity suite thing, like, I don't know if I can actually show you this. Like got here, we got the calendar and then here's the to-do thing. That can be kind of bloat for a lot of people. And it had, you know, it has all these features that you might not necessarily need. Now, one of the cool things about it is it does have a full suite of plugins that you can use, uh, including for contact syncing and uh, themes and all this sorts of stuff. And that's not something that the other apps on this list can boast. Uh, it's And it's also probably, the because it's so popular, it has the biggest community. Therefore, if you have problems, chances are you'll probably be able to find help with this one better than if you used one of the other apps, especially Neomut. Neomut doesn't have as big a community, so you're not going to be able to find the support as much as you would on uh, Thunderbird. Now, the next one I'm going to be talking about is Mailspring. Um, Mailspring is probably the prettiest of the apps on this list. If you like the d design aesthetic of Apple's applications, this is probably kind of like that. Now, it also has a ton of cool features. It has read receipts and, t and open and link tr tracking uh, enabled out of the box. It has contact tracing and a ton of different um, cool little features that it has built in that you can use that none of the other apps actually have. For example, it has this share this thread feature, so you could actually share a email thread to the cloud and then share it to people who aren't actually in the conversation, which is kind of cool. It's definitely not for everyone, though, because this aesthetic is very pretty. It doesn't work well with tiling window managers because it has this menu up here, and you can't get rid of that. I've also noticed that it doesn't really play well at all with GTK themes. This is written by itself in terms of theming and stuff. You can change the theme. You know, you, you could go to the dark theme here like that. And you can also create your own theme. But again, it's not, it doesn't actually go through and follow your GTK theme uh, like some of the other ones will actually will on this. Uh, Thunderbird kind of does, uh, but it more focuses on your, the theme you install uh, from uh, the, the web store or whatever it's called. Uh, all right, so that's Mailspring. I should probably should mention that it does feature, it does work well with Gmail and Proton and all those things. Uh, the biggest downside, actually, that I, I forgot to mention this, I really should mention this, is that Mailspring requires you to have a Mailspring account in order to even use the app. It will not even open the app and allow you to sign into an email account without having a Mailspring account. And as far as I can tell, that Mailspring account is completely useless. You don't get anything for it. You're just giving them your email address for no apparent reason. Uh, now, if you sign up for their pro account, then I suppose you'd maybe get some kind of benefits for having an account through Mailspring. But, you know, I don't know anybody who does it. It's $8 a month. I'm not going to pay $8 a month for an email client when there are other free options or when I can give that money to an app, uh, a developer that I actually want to support. That I'm not being forced to support, you know. So uh, keep that in mind. You can't actually use this without having an account. So the next one I want to talk about is Geary. Now you'll notice here that I don't actually have Geary, and I I have do have Geary installed, but I can't sign into it because it, it doesn't play well with Gmail. Now if you have uh, two-factor authentication set up, you can get an app-specific password and actually get this to work. Uh, but I wasn't going to go through and do that for this video. I just I just didn't have time to do it. Uh, but Geary itself is actually very well designed. It kind of reminds you of Mailspring and kind of like uh, reminds you of maybe Apple Mail in terms of design. Uh, it may it probably won't use this looking theme anymore because this is you know an older screenshot. So it will use your GTK theme from whatever you're using, uh, and it's just an email client, so it doesn't have the extra features or functionality of something like Thunderbird. It's just an email client. It's very fast and it's easy to set up. So if you're using just a standard IMAP account, it is truly easy to set up. If you're using Gmail, it's not so easy to set up because like I said, you have to have two-factor authentication on and you have to have an app-specific platform in actually order to get to work. Uh, and that's because it doesn't, unlike Thunderbird, where Thunderbird will take you to like a to the browser once you set try to sign in with Gmail and it'll allow you to sign in with Google's like web page or whatever. And then we'll take you back to the app after authenticating. 
Geary does not do that. It just has a regular old login screen that it for itself, and that's all it is. Uh, and and that's really disappointing if you're using Gmail. So uh, if you're using something else, this is probably the best solution on the list because Geary is really well done. It's really fast. I will say that it's not updated very often. So while I don't think it's abandoned, it's updated maybe once a year-ish. So in terms of uh, security patches and new features and stuff, you're not going to be expecting a lot with Geary. This is one of those ones that just is, I think, developed by like one or two people, and that's literally all there is. It, it's good, but just keep that in mind. Okay, so the last one on the list is Evolution, and once again, you'll notice that I don't have this up for you to actually use, and that's because it will not launch on my computer. Like, I have it installed. If I do Evolution, like, it's there, and I can hit Enter, and it never shows up. I don't know why. I installed it through the the uh, arch repositories and i'm not sure like actually i can actually go through and look that's that'd be an interesting so it has been updated recently so why it doesn't work on my particular system i don't know that's just it's just a thing so it, that might be just be a me problem i have had pro this problem in the past where we'll just not start for whatever reason and, and whether that's an arch problem or if it's an evolution problem like i said i'm not sure so that may be turning you away from this immediately, but I would say don't let it unless it actually won't work for you. I give it a try because of all of them on the list, I think Evolution is probably the best. Now, it is a full productivity suite. It has contacts, current calendars, tasks, and memos. You may never use those things. It doesn't matter. The reason why I like it and when I can get it to work, I use it uh, when I'm not using Neoma is because it's easy to set up. It works well with most email accounts, including Gmail, it follows the GTK theming very well because it's actually developed by the GNOME Foundation, or at least somebody who's associated with the GNOME Foundation. So um, if you don't like supporting GNOME software, then this one probably is not for you. Uh, it has enterprise support. I didn't mention enterprise support for the other ones, but MailSpring has enterprise support and Thunderbird has enterprise support. So if you have an enterprise email, those three or these three will work the best for you. I don't think Gary does. And... I'm not sure how Neomut would support it. Uh, I'm assuming you'd have to have some kind of hackery in order to actually get it to work. Geary is updated very frequently. It's it's done, like I said, it's supported by the GNOME Foundation. The code is actually on the GNOME GitLab, so it, you know it's very well tied in with GNOME. So if you're if you're a GNOME user or a, a desktop environment that's based on GNOME or GTK, this is probably the one that will look the best and we'll get the most updates. Uh, it's also very fast when you can actually get a start. Um, and like I said, it has a full productivity suite. So if that's something that you're looking for, that you know you, you, want, you, want, you want to have all of your calendars and tests and emails and stuff all in one place, this would be a, a great option. Uh, in terms of comparing this one and uh, Thunderbird, which is also the full productivity suite thing, really that's going to, to come down to uh, how much you want to customize the inter interface because evolution doesn't have very much customization in terms of interface at all uh thunderbird allows a lot of customization and has theming and stuff and plugin support and all this kind of stuff whereas evolution you know, is really kind of just meant to be however it is that's what you get out of the box is what you're going to get so in terms of cons the full productivity suite again may turn pe some people off it might be bloat for some people maybe you just want an email client in which case you'll want to you know, look at one of the other ones on the list. Uh, the design may not be for everybody. Like I said, uh, it's not very customizable. Thunderbird, of all of them in terms of interface, Thunderbird is the most customizable. Unless you're looking at like Neomut where you can actually go through and really get into the code. Um, and the last one is that I've had some problems with bugs in the past. So uh, on my system right now, I can't get it to launch. Don't know why. Uh, I've had that problem before. I've had problems where it would crash in the past. So uh, one of the cons of it being updated so frequently is you're probably going to see more bugs with it than what you would with Geary in term, you know, because Geary seems to be a little bit more stable. Now, granted, if there's a show-stopping bug on Geary, it's not probably going to get fixed as fast as it would on Evolution. So that's a thing. So those are the top five email clients for Linux. Now, like I said, I use Neomut, but that's mostly because I'm a nerd for everything in the terminal. And I will continue to be that way for a long time. It's just the way I 
prefer to do work. If I were to use a GUI, I'd probably use Evolution if I could get it to run, or Thunderbird. Uh, Mailspring is the prettiest, and I like the aesthetic of Mailspring, but I don't... This camera is horrible. <laughs> uh, we'll just fight through it, shall we? Um, I'll try to turn the lights up. Maybe that'll stop. If anybody ever wonders why I'm really well lit, and overlit maybe, it's because this camera requires weird lighting, and if you don't have it sit just right, it does this nonsense. Anyways, um, what was I talking about? Um, if, if I were to use one of the GUI ones, it'd probably be Evolution or Thunderbird. Thunderbird seems to be the most customizable, and I kind of like the customizable thing. So Th Thunderbird probably would be my option, seeing as how I can't get Evolution to work. So anyways, if you use a different email client, let me know in the comments below if you're something else that you like, or let me know which one of these that you enjoy. And um, I'll work on the whole shifting light thing. I don't know what the hell's going on with that. It's oh, it really got dark there. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at the Linux Cast. You can follow us on Facebook at the Linux Cast. And you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Linux Cast. Uh, I'd like to take a moment to thank our current sponsors, Devon, Marcus, Meglin, Merrick, and Camp. Thanks, everybody, for your support. Support me for a better camera, if you would, please. Seriously, this is ridiculous. This is dumb. Um, <laughs> thank you for your support. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.